If you would like to know the differences between Canadian, American and British English, then stay tuned as this is the video for you. We will be looking at words pronounced different and completely different words altogether. Welcome back. You are with me, Karis, your very own English mentor. I release videos twice a week and I also host live English lessons. So if you would like to be part of my community, why not go ahead and hit the subscribe button now? Canadian English tends to be more flexible than British English, especially with their spellings. I'm not going to be alone in this video. I've got my good friend Jessie, who is from Canada, to help me out. So let's go ahead and take a look at words pronounced differently. Vitamins are a supplement to help increase healthy nutrients. In the UK, the pronunciation is vitamin, vitamin. But what about in Canada? Vitamin. Aluminium, a light silvery metal normally used with food. In British English, we say aluminium. How about in Canada? Aluminum. Aluminum. <laughs> I prefer aluminium as that sounds like a spell from Harry Potter. Aluminum. <laughs> Privacy. This is when one is in a state when not disturbed by someone else. In British English, privacy. In Canadian English, privacy. <laughs> and also a small confession, I personally do say privacy, but throughout most of the UK, you will hear privacy. Schedule. This is someone's day-to-day -day plan. In British English, you will hear schedule. And in Canadian English? Schedule. Again, small confession, I actually say schedule. So both schedule and schedule, you will hear throughout the UK. Maybe I'm more Canadian than British. Hmm. <laughs> Garage, a place where we normally keep a car. In British English, we say garage, garage. And in Canadian? Garage. It's not garage, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesse. I completely disagree with you. I think garage is very unnatural to say. <laughs> I'm going to stick with garage. <laughs> Water. A colourless, odourless, but delicious fluid. And in British English, we say water. Water. Can't say these things with a straight face. Mobile phone. In British English, we say mobile. But what about in Canada? Mobile. I know you use the word mobile to describe a mobile phone. We call it a cell phone here. We rarely use the word mobile. Thank you, Jesse. That's good to know. So in Canada, you would more hear cell phone, which is similar to American English. But for us Brits, we would always call it a mobile. Advertisement. This is a notice or announcement promoting a product. And in British English, 
we would say advertisement. Advertisement. So can you hear those differences? There's just a subtle difference in the way we say advertisement. And speaking of advertisement, if you haven't already, why not hit that subscribe button and support me? Bald. This is when a person lacks or has no hair. We would say bald. Bald. I don't know how you'd say that word differently. Bald is how we say it, Jesse. That's the difference. <laughs> Either means one or the other. And actually, why I'm talking about it, you can click somewhere up here to see a video on either and neither that I did recently to understand these two quite confusing words. But anyway, back to the video. In British English, we would pronounce this word either. Either. Neither means none of the options. And we say neither. Neither. Either either. Neither neither. Either oh. either, neither neither. <laughs> Leisure. This is when someone is not working and is something they do in their free time. Leisure. Leisure? Does it make sense? It's got an eye in there. Where did the eye go? Where did the eye go? Leisure. <laughs> I don't know, Jesse. Good question. I don't make the rules. <laughs> I just follow them sometimes. <laughs> bottle. <laughs> a bottle is a container. And in British English, bottle. Bottle. Vase. A decorative container to put flowers in. It doesn't smell, it's fake. <laughs> but in British English, we say vase. Vase. Mm. You would never hear vase in the UK, I don't think. A route is a course or a way getting from a starting position to a destination. And we say route. Okay, if you want the American version, Karis, route. But us Canadians, we say route. Thank you, Jesse, for that information. That's quite interesting to know that in American English, they say route. But for Canadians and British, we say root. Okay, so we have looked at words we pronounce differently, but how about the same object or thing which has a different word? Let's go ahead and learn some of these differences. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit the like button. To burgle somewhere means you enter a building illegally and are committing a crime. And the British English, burgle. You say burgle, I say thief. A Hindu is a celebration for women, typically before they are about to get married. And we would say, it's a Hindu. Hindu? No, it's a bachelorette. What is it, a party for chickens? A lift is an object which either raises you or lowers your level. And in British English, we say lift. Lift? No, it's called an elevator. Personally, I have to confess, I actually prefer the word elevator to lift, as I just think it sounds a little bit more fancier. Holiday. 
A holiday is an extended period of leisure time or recreation. And we would say the word holiday. You go on holiday, I go on vacation. A holiday is a day where you get off work. Good point, Jesse. Thanks for the information. However, I'm going to stick to using the word holiday. <laughs> Crisps. <laughs> it's a wafer thin type of potato, either fried or baked, and typically eaten as a snack. And in British English, we say crisp. You say crisp? I say chips. To be honest, most places do use the word chip. Crisp is actually a really hard word to pronounce correctly. <laughs> Courgette, a type of vegetable grown from the ground. And in British English, we call this a courgette. What's a courgette? It sounds like a musical instrument. Are you talking about a zucchini? <laughs> it's not a musical instrument. What you call a zucchini, we call a courgette. <music> aubergine. Aubergine is a vegetable which is grown from the ground. And we say aubergine. You say aubergine? That also does not sound like a vegetable. Eggplant. It may not sound like a vegetable, but it is. <laughs> Coriander. Coriander is a herb and part of the parsley family. And in British English, you will hear the word coriander. Coriander? I don't understand. Do you mean cilantro? Chips is a long, thin strip of potato, and I love them. And in British English, you will hear people calling these chips. Chips? You mean like potato chips? We call them fries. CV. A CV is what you would typically send when applying for a job and it contains your education and job history. We in the UK call it a CV. CV? Resume. Interesting. In Canada, they call it a resume, same as American English, but in the UK, we say CV. However, if someone was to say the word resume, we would definitely understand. Sellotape is a transparent tape, and we call it sellotape. Sellotape? No, we call it sticky tape. I have to agree. I think sticky tape makes a little bit more sense as you do use it to stick two things together. A boot is an enclosed space you would find at the back of a car. We say boot. Boot, we call it Trunk. A bonnet is the front of the car, which typically covers the engine. And in the UK, we call this a bonnet. Boot and bonnet? Is it because boots go on your feet and bonnets go on your head? Hood and trunk. I never thought about that, Jesse. It is a nice way to view it as a bonnet on the top of your head and the boot on your feet. <laughs> Football is a game played with normally 11 people on each side and it involves kicking a ball. So in the UK, we call it football. You play football? That's 
where you throw the ball with your hands. <laughs> we call it soccer when you kick it with your foot. I'm sorry, Jesse. I completely cannot get on board with soccer. I think football makes much more sense because the whole game is played with your feet and you're kicking a ball. So football, it makes perfect sense. A hoover is a vacuum cleaner used to clean a place. And in the UK, typically you will hear the word hoover. Hoover? That's the name of Hoover Dam. We call it a vacuum. Okay, okay, I have to admit, vacuum cleaner makes much more sense and Hoover is actually a brand. But you will hear the word Hoover all over the UK. A motorway is a road designed for fast traffic. And in the UK, we have one word for it and it is motorway. Motorway? We call it a highway or a freeway. No, we do not say freeway or highway, just motorway. Another word for toilet is the word loo. Loo? We call it a bathroom or a washroom. Bathroom for us is where you may go to take a shower or a bath. Basically, to have a wash. A queue is a sequence of people awaiting their turn. So in the UK, we call this a queue. And we are also very good at queuing. <laughs> queue? We call it a line. Line makes sense. A brolly is an informal term for the word umbrella. So we would call it a brolly. Brolly? That sounds like somebody's name. We call it an umbrella. I'm not gonna open it inside because I'm superstitious and that brings you bad luck. Don't put it up, Jesse. That will bring you bad luck. But okay, I have to admit, you will hear umbrella and brolly within the UK. Dodgy is an adjective used to describe a dishonest or unreliable person. And in the UK, we would call this type of person dodgy. Dodgy? No, we would call somebody shady. That's when they look suspicious. I prefer American English because a lot of your words seem silly, like loo or brawly or bonnet, all seem a bit silly. What's my favorite British word? I really like the word courgette because it sounds fancier than zucchini. So, Jesse, you're telling me your favorite British word is actually French? <laughs> Let me tell you this. Which either word you're choosing to use, which either pronunciation you're choosing to use, is perfectly fine. Please do not go changing. There is no right way or wrong way. This is supposed to be a little bit of fun to learn about the differences to see how fascinating the English language can be. Let me know your favourite word or a new word you learned below in the comments. I absolutely love reading them. If you like this video, why not go and check out this one or this one? And as always, go and subscribe! <laughs>